Un cálido saludo, divinos televidentes. Mi nombre es José, desde San José, Costa Rica. Nuestra gente les desea una feliz Navidad y que Dios los bendiga a ustedes y a sus seres queridos. En el episodio de hoy les presentamos la historia de la Navidad y el amor de Jesús, parte 1 de 2. Jesucristo, profeta, carpintero, místico, hijo de Dios, salvador y amigo. Él es conocido por muchos nombres. El nacimiento de este amado maestro que nació en Belén marcó el inicio del calendario occidental. Tan importante fue su influencia en la humanidad. El nacimiento de este hombre, que fue uno con Dios, es un evento sagrado que marca toda una era. Jesús hizo su aparición en el escenario del mundo de forma humilde. Nació de una pareja judía devota, José y María, a los que se les dio signos de su grandeza. Por la Biblia sabemos que cuando Jesús tenía 12 años, se quedó en un templo en Jerusalén para hablar y hacer preguntas a los maestros. La gente estaba asombrada por su entendimiento. Muchas fuentes dicen que Jesús fue a la India, tierra del conocimiento espiritual desde tiempo inmemorial, donde estudió con discípulos y profesores sabios. Entra después en la narrativa del Evangelio a la edad de 30 años, cuando fue bautizado por Juan el Bautista, un evento que marca el principio de su breve vida pública como maestro. Jesús enseñó el amor y el perdón de Dios a toda la gente de corazón abierto. Jesús podía hablar de las escrituras con los eruditos y las aprendió, pero en general contaba simples historias llamadas parábolas, que todos podían entender. Jesús es especialmente amado y recordado por su sacrificio. Tres días después de su crucifixión, resucitó de entre los muertos en gloria y triunfo. Para celebrar esta Navidad en el amor y la gloria de Jesús, nos gustaría presentar el siguiente extracto de la conferencia de la Maestra Suprema Ching Hai a los miembros de nuestra asociación en una reunión en Nochebuena, el 24 de diciembre de 1990, en Costa Rica. Thanks to Jesus that we have a beautiful night like this. Should read something? A story of 2,000 years ago in the Bible. When Jesus was born, some people saw the light. Then suddenly there was a blaze of light, so bright. The men had to shield their eyes. And out of the brightness came the voice of God's messenger angel. Don't be afraid. I've come with good news for you and all the world. The Savior has come, God's promised King, born today in Bethlehem. You will find the baby asleep in a manger. Then the shepherds saw a great crowd of angels, all praising God. Glory to God in heaven, and peace to all who love Him on earth. When the angels had gone, And the sky was dark again. The shepherds began to talk among themselves. We must go to Bethlehem and see what happened. So we all know what had happened. A Savior was born to save the people of the world. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Glory to all his children. Amen. Now we remember 2,000 years ago, a great being was born among ourselves. He was so great that we have no words to praise him. Only God knows his greatness. We, the mortal, mortals, cannot understand. We can only understand when we become as great as he. Now we would often ask ourselves, why is it that Jesus was made 
to die so quickly when he just reached the prime of his glory, of his mission, that is to spread the message of God. But if he didn't leave the, the earth so in such a tragic way and in, in such a short time, probably his name would have been forgotten by now. God has made him sacrifice in this way so that the whole world will remember, so that we might treasure a messenger of God by whichever name he came. Since the ancient times, our world has always been in trouble. People always err and forget God. So God has always to send some messengers to remind us. But Jesus was the most remembered because of his greatness and also because of his uh, very short stay with us and the way he has left us and resurrected. Now we will say the great Son of God, he had great power and so much miracles. Why doesn't he change his destiny? Why he has to die in such a tragic way? But he must, he must do it. Otherwise, we are not shocked out of our sleep. We would think the world is forever. <laughs> our master is forever. Because there was also some other masters before Jesus. He himself also said, now people do not remember them so much as we remember Jesus. And when we remember Jesus, we would remember God and we would derive some blessing because Jesus was the Son of God. In the other world, Jesus was God personified on earth. He had to leave us very early. He has his purpose. He wanted to shock us out of our slumber, deep sleep. How many thousand years later, we still shocked if we remember the story because of the ephemeral nature of the uh, existence on earth, that even the Son of God had to die. Everyone must go eventually, even so great as Jesus. He cannot preserve this ephemeral body, also cannot be protected from the violence and ignorance of the people of this world. That means, how would we to feel safe? That's why he humbly submitted himself to the punishment which he did not deserve. He suffered for the sake of everyone. If we say Jesus used his blood to wash away our sin, it's not over saying, it's not exaggerating. It is true. Because every time we think of Jesus, we learn something. At least we remember the ephemeral nature of our world, of our bodies. At least we learn humility. Such a great one had to suffer in such a way because he was so humble. He surrendered himself to God, say, whatever God's will be done. Otherwise, he could have escaped. We all know he had a lot of magical power, including the, the power to be invisible. But he chose to obey God's arrangement. So when we think of him, we will say, who are we to be proud? to forget uh, God's will and not to surrender. But these lessons are hard to learn. If only we would learn these well, then Jesus' sacrifice was worthwhile, and we would be worthy uh, disciples of His. Everything is arranged by God for some purpose. Our effort is needed only so that we know we don't need any effort. All the precepts, all the meditation hours I have prescribed to you, all the effort that you put in, 
only so that finally you learn to use no effort, no human effort, like Jesus was. He had died on the cross just to give us a perfect example of surrender. And if we know this and if we learn this well, we are good Christians. During his great mission, short mission, he always preached that lesson, nothing else. The Bible also always emphasized this. Seek you first the kingdom of God and all the things shall be added unto you. Or um, worry you not for the tomorrows. Take care of today only. Or do not worry what you will eat and what you will clothe. Because look at the lily of the valley. If the Father takes care of the lily of the valley, Is how he would he not take care of us? Because are we not better than the lilies of the valley? But uh, many people in his time do, did not heed his message. So every year we should celebrate the birthday of Jesus and try our best to remember and also to remind others how to surrender to God. Try to surrender to God. At least try to remember God. God is within us. But if we are too busy thinking of all other things and wanting all other things, then God has no chance to contact us. God has no chance to put his message through, whether through silence in our heart or through a living messenger. I think Jesus sacrificed just to let us know this lesson, that lay you not the treasure uh, on earth, where most do corrupt and destroy, but lay your treasure in heaven, because it's eternal. Hmm? How do we lay our treasure in heaven? Should we build a safe and put our money inside? No. In heaven, we don't need money. <laughs> Everything is provided in plenty before we ask. So why is it that Jesus said we should uh, I say, lay our treasure in heaven. It means build up our merit. Love God. How to love God? Keep God's commandment. There is only ten. It's very easy. When we compare with the so many temptations and difficulties in the world, when we compare to how much obstacles and difficulties and endurance we have to go through in order to preserve a marriage or a job or a, <laughs> a study, yes. And we accept everything in this world. For what purpose? Each one eat about three meals a day and wear just a few clothes. And we work so hard and we endure everything. We keep all the rules of the manufactory <laughs> if we want to keep that job to please the boss. Mm. And what does the boss give us? Not much. And God gives us everything if we keep His commandments. And we neglect. Only because God is invisible to us. And God is so liberal. God doesn't come and <laughs> punch on us every day and say, Hey, you don't keep the commandment, you. <laughs> So we don't fear him, as we fear our boss, or maybe our relatives, friends, wives, husband, whatever. Sometimes when we are married and we have a very difficult husband, a very difficult wife, and it give us, give us a lot of trouble, but we bear it because we love that spouse or because we fear that person. But we do not think to fear God and keep his commandments. 